Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing with your hosts, Glenn Thayer and the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young. Tom and I were talking about the, the rules of website design and, and development and really, do we have any rules, Tom? I mean, do we, do we really have any rules that are set in stone on how we have to communicate with our target market? Well, I think you should have rules around how you communicate with the target market. I think there's there's universal rules for website design and development that we talk about in these podcasts, fundamentals of usability, good usability. But I think we can go one step beyond that, and we can develop rules that are very specific to the target market. And what I mean by that is, is almost like getting inside the head of the user, really understanding them, and then preparing a document for your web team that says these are the guidelines we need to follow because it meets the needs of our target market. Because not all web users are alike. Now, in fact, none of them are alike. <laughs> They're all different. But we can um, we can group web users into segments and all kinds of different segments. And so if you understand the segment you're marketing to, then you can set up these guidelines or rules for that segment. And you can do it without breaking any, uni any universal usability rules and by also meeting the 10 out of 10 rule, because 10 out of 10 people should still get the website in general. And I, I just think that this is so important, especially with so many websites now being built by teams, where you'll have a dozen people working on the company website with a dozen different perceptions and di different views on what should be on that site. Well, someone needs to kind of you know, grab this and, and put this plan together that's, that's based on these rules that the whole team needs to follow. Well, that really goes all the way back to the, to the beginning on just your web content strategy and your web marketing strategy. It's understanding your user, understanding what yes. they want and how they use the Internet. Because obviously there's, there's a huge difference between how somebody in their 60s is going to use the Internet and what they're expecting visually. Are they looking for videos? Are they looking at pictures? Are they looking at text that they can dig into? Versus maybe a teenager who might be, hey, give me pictures and video. I don't really care about text. That's right. It, it, and so it, it is part of the fundamentals we've talked about. I'm just taking it one step further and saying, but let's be very specific to our segment. And, and I think that you need to continue with surveys of your target market. You need to spend time you know, understanding and living their issues. In fact, I think it would be great if you could hire someone on your team that was in your target market and ask them specifically, hey, what was it like to to do that and let's let's make sure we cover that on the website. And of course, do your user testing, which we've talked about. Uh, do user testing with your target market and compare what you see in the user testing to what you see on your web stats. Because the biggest indicator that you don't have the right rules set up for your website, or no one or there's no rules set up period, is that they, you've got a high bounce rate, you've got low page per views, you have low time on the site. All those things indicate that there's a disconnect between the website and your target market. So the thing that you want to do is close that gap. And I think it really does start with getting everyone on the team on the same page and write these things down. And then I think you'll start to see improvement in your web stats, which means you'll see improvement in your website. Well, I think that's also going back to it's going back to your target market consistently and saying, is this what you would do? Is this something that you would want? Right. Is this a perfect website for you? You could even take out a couple of your ideal clients uh, and see if you can clear their schedule for a day. Can you wind them and dine them? Can you take them out and and yes, you, you kind of rent their brain for four hours, if you will, and then take them golfing or something, something where there's an added benefit for them for doing it. Absolutely. Talk to them. But in addition to just talking with them, also make sure that, that you you run ideas past them and you let them interact with those ideas. For example, you let them, you know, if you have an autoplay video on your website, let them interact with that autoplay video and get some feedback from them. Do they like it? Do they not like it? Does it turn them off? You know, what does it do for them? And then just keep in mind, when you set up these rules that you cover all areas of web marketing, which we've talked about in detail in these, in these podcasts, um, and that you really focus on content and your approach to content. Now, a universal rule for a website, and then we'll do a few examples of this, a universal rule for a website is that you have taglines. So people read the taglines and they understand what you do. That's universal. 10 out of 10 people need to read a tagline and get it. 
What is not so universal is then your approach to content. The way you write content for an engineer is going to be different than a teenager or an older folk or a real estate agent or a construction worker. So content is definitely something to consider. Navigation, global navigation, should be easy to understand and so forth. But navigation is also something to consider, especially when it comes to navigation titles, conversion points, use of design, use of photography and captions on photography. All of those things should be covered in your rules. Like what kind of photography um, is best used for that market segment and what kind of design and so forth. Those are the areas that the rules should cover. You know, one one other thing for a rule, I'm going to put this in here. This is a personal pet peeve of mine. Eliminate all of your acronyms on your landing page or your homepage. That's true. Because nothing gets me more riled up than going onto a website and seeing acronym soup for an industry that I may not understand, that I'm trying to get information on, That's and true. I don't get it. What is CAE? What is BBC? What is the, you know, and I have no idea what it is. It's like I'm thinking, you know, the, the BBC in, in the UK. That's right, and that's what we've talked about in the, in the podcast is that you definitely want to have um, a rule of thumb be for your website that 10 out of 10 people get your main landing page taglines or at least your home page. And I always have used this example, you know, what if Bill Gates is on your website and he needs to make a referral? <laughs> we want to make sure he makes the right referral and he understands the acronym. Yeah, inside your website, that's fine if you understand. But tell me what the acronym means before you start that's using it. That's right, and you made a good point, Glenn. We were talking about there is a difference between landing pages and interior page content. So, you know, if you have a landing page that is googly gawk to most people, you can have high bounce rate. If you have a landing page that 10 out of 10 people get and understand and then know to go deeper for more extensive content, you're going to have a winning website. You're going to have better at, uh, website for SEO, too. Now, can't we just use the same rule outline for all of the websites and for any website that's done and just change the target market? Well, I think that's what we tend to do. And in fact, if you look at web marketing managers and companies, if as they switch jobs, it's very common for them to just take the guidelines and rules from the previous job and what worked to the new job. But you got to keep in mind that your market segment's changing. And, um, and I, I have a few examples that we can talk a little bit about specific examples of how to approach these marketplaces. Um, consider the differences between engineers and non-technical salespeople, what they might expect on a website. Engineers want to see data, information, and content. They're not going to be impressed with graphics or design. Non-technical salespeople are going to, for the most part, want quick information, bullet points, don't give me too much detail, have somebody's got to jump out at me, make an impression, and then I'll convert. Age differences. Look at teenagers versus the elderly, and they both have yeah. strong purchasing power. Um, you know, <laughs> that's, that's kind of a no-brainer, but as you work toward other age demographics from someone that's in their 20s and 30s to someone that's in their 40s and 50s, you've got to look at the different, need, different needs and different way that they communicate and read content. Um, construction workers versus IT professionals. You know, mobile versus office workers, someone who you know is going to most likely visit your site or your content on the move versus someone sitting in an office with a nice big, you know, screen in front of them. Or, you know, we can also talk about, you know, dentistry. Let's talk about gingivitis, gum, gum disease. Yeah, you know, very I mean, specific. Absolutely. If you want, if you have a, a new product that treats gum disease, but your demographic is wide, so you have a demographic for the elderly and you have teenagers or uh, tweens, if you will, and you want to specifically go there, you're going to have a different web, you're going to need a different website and different copy for those two demographics. That's true. And if you focus on an online brochure, which so many websites do, then you're not going to meet anyone's needs because you're just going to be kind of stuck in the middle of you know, this thing that doesn't work and doesn't meet the specific needs of, you know, a parent of a teenager looking for dentistry versus someone in their 60s that's looking for dental work. Um, you know, and, and, th- and even consider the difference between like, a, we would talk about a real estate professional versus an accountant. Right. You know, they're both professionals. They both have good purchasing power. But how could these, the things that they're going to need from a website could be very, very different. Or like a mobile DJ. If you're selling equipment to mobile DJs, yes, um, you know one thing you're not going to want to do, which comes to mind, which I've seen designers do many times, they put music on the page. Guess what? 
If you're trying to sell something to a DJ, don't put music on your page. Because most of the time, uh, what you'll find is disc jockeys, uh, the ones that are that are passionate about DJ, not ones just go in and do it because they're like, hey, I'll play whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The ones that are passionate about the music are music elitists. That's right. And so because of that, you are going to be wrong 99% of the time on the music you and put turn on. Them off. And yes. you're going to turn them off and they say, this person does not get who I am and what I do. That's right. And, and I think it, it, a similar point would be if you're trying to get folks to volunteer for something, and then you start offering them money to do this volunteer work, well, they probably are volunteering because they're passionate about it. They're not doing it for the money. So the impact of now giving them money to volunteer could turn them off as well. So that's part of what could be counterintuitive on a website. And when you do those types of things, you're not following the basic rules or guidelines. I think you really need to, to plan this out, write down these, these guidelines, and then make sure everyone on the team follows them. And you can only do it by really understanding the target market and get inside their head. So what are the key action items for our listeners, Tom? Well, I think number one is to conduct the research. And we've, we've talked about this in other podcasts. In fact, there's podcasts on how to do usability testing and all that. Um, get some research done or hire someone on your team that has been in that target market. And then make a short list of universal standards for your website for the target market, for that specific person. Distribute those standards to all the people on your team. And then, this is the most important one, is have someone on your team make sure that those rules are followed. Have a key person who is the keeper of the rules. There's probably someone that will volunteer for that and love doing it. And, you know, I think this is, this is the kind of thing that if you've been looking for something to take your website to another level, you've been looking for something to increase conversions or traffic or lower the bounce rate, this is a really good place to start. Follow these guidelines and, and get them in place. But you know what? Uh, speaking on that, if you, if you know, you're improving your website. I think that's really what it is, is we're always improving our websites. And the, and the great thing about the web right now is it's always live. Our websites are live, and we can make dynamic adjustments immediately yes. and, see the, and see the return. Now, as an aside, what is the best way to do it? Is it best to, if, you know, while we're still getting our website design and, and going, is it best to just launch something is there? And then change content as we get new information from our target market. Yes, it is best to launch. It's always best to have something that's better than what you currently have. So if you have nothing, then an online brochure is better than nothing. And, um, and then, of course, you can't really track the data on nothing. So, that's, so you want to have something out there. But the rule of thumb is when you have something better than what's currently there, then you launch it. And I would say if you have a current website you want to tackle these things one at a time, I would start with global navigation, then move to link titles for your navigation, and then move into key content areas and taglines, and then work into deeper content. And that's where you want to set these guidelines up. This has been an Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. For more information and to see all the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitiveblog.com. If you have a website you'd like us to review or an issue you'd like to see covered in future podcasts, email us at info at intuitivewebsites.com.